My name is Cesar, and I'm a LEGO model designer in the Star Wars team, and I've designed the Master Builder series Mos Eisley Cantina. The Mos Eisley Cantina is located in the Mos Eisley spaceport in the planet Tatooine, and you see it for the first time in Episode 4, A New Hope. It's a very gloomy and mysterious place, and you see a lot of aliens and creatures for the first time in the saga. The set has 3,187 pieces, and it consists of several parts. You have the main building, which is the cantina itself, which is a fully enclosed, complete building with detachable roofs. Inside, you will find a complete bar. You'll also find six alcoves. One of them is for the cantina band, and it has a stage for them to perform. Four of them have two sofas and one table, so you can fit two figures on each one. But the last one has four seats and a bigger table, and in that way you can recreate the scene where Obi-Wan and Luke meet with Han Solo and Chewbacca and make the deal for 17,000 credits. Attached to the cantina building, there's a bit of landscape. You'll find two big and detailed moisture evaporators. There's also a spot for the dewback to be parked with food and water. And uh, there are two additional buildings. They are parts shop run by a Jawa. You will find all kinds of uh, different things like engine parts, tools, and whatnot. In this set, we have 21 minifigures. Of course, we had to include our heroes. So you have Luke Skywalker and Obi-Wan, the droid duo Han and Chewie, and then we also included a bunch of characters that have iconic scenes uh, within the cantina. So you have the cantina band, the, the modal nodes. We also have Wu Her, who's the owner of the cantina. And then we also have Greedo, who has his shootout with Han Solo. And also Dr. Cornelius Evazan and Panda Baba, who get into a little scuffle with Luke and Obi-Wan at the bar. Beyond that, we've included a lot of what I'd call background characters, like Moma Nadan and Herkek Kalfas, and we also have Kabe, so some interesting <laughs> names there for sure. My favorites are probably the ones that we got to make new elements for. So we have Panda Baba, who has a brand new head element. We have Kardu Saimalak, the Deveronian, who has the pointy, the pointy horns, so that's a brand new element as well. And also Garandin, the spy, we've created his nose and goggles, which actually sit on the, the neck of the minifigure. It, it fits perfectly with the newly designed hood element that we've created. There are a couple of Easter eggs on this set. The first one is a wanted posted written in Arabesh that it's hidden somewhere in the cantina, and it has a picture of R2-D2 and C-3PO. The second one is that the Jawa shop is selling a very valuable item, a piece of Kaiba crystal, which as every Jedi in a galaxy knows, it's the material that lightsabers are constructed with. A new decorated element in the set is an Imperial cargo crate. It has the Imperial logo on one side and then a cargo inscription on the other side in Arabesh. There are a few clever uh, and interesting techniques used in this set. One of them, for instance, is the use of car rims as the tables in the alcoves. I also used old windscreen in white as the support for the three thirsters on the V35 Courier, and it's actually built upside down and the shape is just perfect. And also, the way the doors open and close and the way they hold up when they're open, it has a very nice mechanism built into it. I actually did the first brick build sketch of this model in the beginning of 2016 when I started at LEGO. And it just sat on my desk for a few years until the right time came to make it into an official set. Cesar and I have worked together on a bunch of sets and I don't think there has been a set we've been more excited for than this one. I had a bunch of pre-designed characters ready to go, like Panda Baba, Dr. Evazan. We knew we wanted to make these one day. We just needed the opportunity. So this has been the dream set that Cesar and I have been hoping for. And we we're both very excited that people are gonna have an opportunity to have it soon. I've designed uh, several sets for the Star Wars line, but this is definitely my favorite one so far. 
I think it's something that I will be proud when I see it on the shelves or when I see it, somebody building it. I've been a fan of LEGO and Star Wars for pretty much as long as I can recall, but never really thinking that these were things that were created by people that had real jobs in the real world. It was like a magical thing that I just go to the toy store, there it was. I think if someone is interested in doing what we do, just remember, it's a real thing. It's attainable. It's very neat to look back and see that you're a part of this thing that you have have a passion for.